I have a question for young earth creationists and biblical literalists. I've asked this question many times and not gotten a satisfactory answer, or any answer, really. Usually the response I get is silence or an attempt to change the subject, or play semantic games, or the issuing of uneducated challenges to modern scientific theories, none of which, of course, is an answer to the question. I've created this video in the hopes that someone will answer this question for me. So, let's lay a little groundwork first. In my home country, the USA, there are a large number of Christians who are biblical literalists. These folks, in my experience, maintain that the Bible is the inerrant, literal word of God. They tend to make exceptions for things like the books of Psalms and Proverbs, as these are apparently poetry, and the parables of Jesus, as they are clearly labeled as parables. But everything else is literal truth, the literal word of God. They therefore would reject the notion that the story of creation as related in the book of Genesis is intended to be metaphor. They would reject any suggestion that the story was a parable written to communicate important information about God, humanity, and their relationship, but not as a literal account of historical events. They also maintain that the flood of Noah was a real event and happened exactly as described in the Bible, and so forth. Please note that if you don't agree that Genesis or the story of Noah are meant to be taken as literal truth, then I am not speaking of you. I'm quite well aware that many sects of Christianity do not regard the Bible as literal truth. Biblical literalists understand that the Bible was written by humans, but they insist that these people were divinely inspired by God and therefore could make no mistake in the text or get God's message wrong. This creates a problem for biblical literalists in that modern scientific findings contradict the Bible. For example, according to modern science, the Earth is not a flat disk on pillars. The Earth is not 6,000 years old. The origin of species was through evolution from common ancestors, not special creation in a garden. Noah's flood never happened. The universe began in a rapid expansion of space-time 13.7 billion years ago, and so forth. These findings are based on rigorous observation and testing of real-world data, and they run contrary to a literal interpretation of the Bible. This leaves biblical literalists in the position of either concluding that the Bible is not inerrant, or that all of the scientific findings are wrong. They choose the latter, which leads to factually incorrect, according to modern science, representations like this. Humans living alongside dinosaurs, as represented in the Creation Museum of Ken Ham. The fossil record makes clear that hominids appeared on the planet 60 million years after the dinosaurs died out. But if the Earth is 6,000 years old, this is impossible. And since the Bible is assumed to be inerrant, modern science must be incorrect. Some literalists go so far as to form museums or political organizations to reinterpret, and in my opinion misrepresent, modern science to be in accord with the Bible. Note that the Bible is never reinterpreted, just the science, and because the interpretations are not subjected to scientific rigor, they fall apart immediately under scrutiny by the scientific community. But that's not really what I want to talk about. I'm not interested in arguing with canned tracts from Answers in Genesis. I want to return to my question. According to the Bible, God is not deceitful, and he cannot be challenged. The Tower of Babel is a good example. Doubt is frowned upon, blessed are those who have not seen and have believed, and it is not humanity's place to question or judge the word of God. Also, God is the author of all. Having created heaven and earth and everything in the entire universe, God is the master of all. No man can ever place himself above God. The Bible, even if its authors were divinely inspired, is written by humans. It is printed and distributed by humans, transcribed and translated by humans, and so forth. I think a biblical literalist would agree with the characterization of God and the Bible that I have just related. So, if the Bible is the work of man, and the earth, 
universe, and man are the direct work of God himself, how is it that elevating the Bible over direct observations of the physical world is not an act of blasphemy? The Bible says that the world is 6,000 years old. Radio decay of isotopes in zircon crystals from the Jack Hills of Western Australia date the Earth to at least 4.4 billion years. If you accept that God is the author of all, then he created the zircon crystals, the isotopes within them, and the principles of radioactive decay. He created the scientists who studied his works directly and observed the message he left for us to find there, that the earth is ancient. Pitting the Bible against observations of the physical world is pitting the words of men against direct observation of that which was created by God himself. How can this not be blasphemy? Modern science has discovered many things that are not mentioned in the Bible, such as DNA, radio waves, plate tectonics, and none of these are contested by biblical literalists. DNA was just as real in biblical Israel as it is today, but it's not mentioned. If you believe that God used people to communicate his words to the masses, is it so hard to imagine that he would have chosen words that the masses could understand? Of late, I have seen banners on some churches admonishing us not to place a period where God has placed a comma under the slogan, God is still speaking. Okay, and today, thanks to all these wonderful gifts of science and technology that we have supposedly received by the grace of God, we are capable of understanding more of the details of God's creation than the Iron Age culture that wrote the Bible. And yet we have a group of people who supposedly believe in the divine wisdom of God, but choose to place the Iron Age text of the Bible before any direct observation of God's handiwork. I can't see how that would not be an insult to God. Not to mention fallacious. I mean, look at the primary importance listed here on AIG's Statement of Faith. Their concern that the evidence might be interpreted by fallible people completely ignores the fact that the Bible can also be interpreted by fallible people. How do they know that they're not interpreting the Bible in a fallible way? How do they know that the additional evidence isn't actually coming from God? How do they know that the scientists aren't divinely inspired? I'm reminded of the parable of the bags of gold from Matthew chapter 25. As the story goes, a man goes on a journey and entrusts his servants with some bags of gold. Two of his servants invest the money and make a healthy profit. The third is afraid of losing his master's money because his master is a hard man, so he buries the gold to keep it safe. When the master returns, he is happy with his servants who invested the money and made a profit, but he is angry with the wicked and lazy servant who instead simply hid the money and gave his master back exactly what he had received. He takes the money from the frightened servant and gives it to the servant that had invested and made the most profit. And then? And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When I was a believer, I took this parable as a warning that we were to invest what we were given by God, that we would be held accountable and expected to make more from what we were given. Does it make sense then to bury the Bible in the ground, refusing to admit any change as we learn more about the world around us? How would such behavior be judged? Fortunately for me, I don't need to worry about the Bible because I am no longer a believer. But, unfortunately, I do indeed need to worry about people who are so afraid of what God might do to them that they are willing to misrepresent scientific findings. People like this spread pseudo-scientific propaganda to the masses, and the masses tend to believe it because they are not scientifically literate. People I know and love are being lied to by the frightened servant. Where science was once something respected and appreciated, nowadays I increasingly see modern science disparaged by ignorant people and political leaders who are quite honestly not in a position to judge. Why does this concern me? If you don't trust the scientific method, 
if you teach your children not to respect scientific inquiry. You end up creating a world where important scientific findings pertinent to the survival of our species or our country are ignored. We'll create our own outer darkness and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.